What's up, Cubs fans? I'm Mike Bowling, the on-air social host for your Chicago Cubs, and I have the pleasure of welcoming in a man who owns the key to the town of Loosedale, Mississippi, but most importantly, will be a father to a baby boy later this summer, none other than left-handed pitcher Justin Steele. Justin, what's going on, my man? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. Anytime. We'll jump right in, man. So I watched the episode. I thought it was fantastic. Um, Just to get another window into who you are as a person. And, you know, I thought it was really cool. You mentioned the difference between your home and Chicago was the amount of people watching. Um, What's it been like to make that adjustment? It truly seemed like even when you came up, you know, you were ready for the spotlight of Chicago, but then seeing this other side of you at home, it was like, you really kind of enjoy the peace and quiet of your hometown. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a big difference, you know, um, playing in high school, like high school baseball games, we'd have, you know, maybe like a thousand people show up sometimes to like a high school baseball game. But I mean, it just doesn't compare to, you know, 40 plus thousand, you know, stands packed at Wrigley. I mean, it's just a different kind of feeling, you know, when you're out there on that mound pitching in front of all the loyal fans of Chicago. And I mean, they're always into the games. They're always behind you. It's a, it's a special feeling. Yeah, man, I, I agree. And like, you know, I've born and raised in the city here and I'm, I'm always used to the rat race and you having such peace and quiet, you know, they show the scenes of you fishing. Like, tell us a little bit more about how that, you know, brings you your peace when you go home for your, for the off season. Yeah, I mean, going home is always like something I look forward to at the end of the season, seeing all my friends, my family, the people I grew up with. And um, I mean, yeah, them, them ponds, I've fished them, fished in them ponds my whole life. That's my, grandparents ponds they have like seven ponds in their uh backfields and stuff so grew up just always fishing around there you know doing different things with my buddies it's just a very small town small town vibes like you know 25 minutes away from the walmart if you want to go get groceries <laughs> everything's kind of far away but that's kind of what's good about it that's awesome man and uh, you mentioned the fishing I, I gotta know what's the what's the biggest fish you've ever caught Biggest over would be a saltwater fish. I caught it. I've caught in like a probably like 80, 90 pound yellowfin tuna. And then oh. freshwater, I've caught some pretty big catfish. And then biggest bass I've caught is eight and a half pounds. Wow. You mentioned 90 pounds. That is, that, yeah. seems, that seems like a workout, man. <laughs> Things get a little bigger in the ocean. <laughs> I, absolutely. All right. So, I, I was digging in. Maybe this makes me too analytical and watching, but I noticed the ball marker on your hat in one of the scenes. Mm-hmm. Did, you play a lot, did you play a lot of golf this summer? And if so, tell us about your best round or, or some fun times you had, maybe some cool people you played with this summer. Yeah, I always enjoy playing golf. I try to go as much as I can in the off season since it's kind of hard to end season. But um, I'd say the highlight of golf in this off season was playing TPC, uh, Went right before they had the TPC Waste Management um, tour out here. I got to play it like a week before they played on it. So the stands were up and everything. I mean, that was an unreal experience. I ended up shooting an 81 out there, which was really cool. I was very fired up about that. But um, 80, yeah, it's, 81, that's that's going low, my dude. Um, how'd you do on 16? 16, I bogeyed it. I uh, was good distance. I just missed the green just right, landed right in between them two bunkers. And then the mm-hmm. hole was like right on the other side of the bunker, like not much green to work with. So I ended up hitting a little past it and then I bogeyed it. Do you think you would have been as good or maybe better if the, the stands were rocking? I mean, that's a crazy environment. I, I would have been, I would have been <laughs> pissing down my leg if the stands were <laughs> I don't know how they do that with all the people watching. Golf's hard. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, My brother's a pretty darn good golfer, and I've recently taken it up, and my sliced baseball swing has taken me a long time to hit the ball straight off the tee. But I really enjoy it, so hopefully you and I can uh, tee it up one day. Absolutely. It took me a while to get figure out my slice as well. (laughs) Uh, Last question on the golf. Do you think you're the best golfer on the team? If not, Who's the big challengers? Uh, I know there's a lot of golfers in there. Yeah, we got some good golfers on our team. I know Hap's pretty good. I know he's in the 70s a lot. Um, wow. Scott Afros is pretty good. I'd say me and him are about the same. Um, Zach Short, he's with the Detroit Tigers now, but he was with us. He was very good at golf, low 70s, mid 70s, really good golfer. Um, I'd probably, but right now, I'd probably say Hap. That's awesome. All right. Enough about the golf. Uh, 
um, I, I wanted to uh, give you a little shout out. It was a nice touch you leave in the note for uh, your, your girl Libby in the new apartment. It feels like you got a lot of big life stuff coming up. I know we just mentioned off the top that you're becoming a dad very soon this summer. What does that even mean just hearing that? And like, how special is that moment going to be for you? Uh, I'm so excited to meet the little guy. You know, every day I've come come home from the field, you know, rub the belly, t- try uh-huh. to talk to him and stuff. And obviously check on Libby and stuff. She's doing good. But, um, yeah, we're very excited. He's the due date's a day after my birthday. So, I mean, that's pretty cool as well. We'll be right in the middle of the season, middle of July. So it's going to it's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, he's going to be born around baseball. That's something that's really cool to me. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're very excited about it. And I know you have a really good relationship with your mom. We saw that in the episode. How, is, how excited is she to be oh, a, a grandma for you? <laughs> she was so pumped when she found it. She was, just could not stop smiling. That's so cool. Well, I, I'm, I'm wishing you the best for you and your family. Super exciting, I'm sure, this summer. And yeah, I mean, like you're going to have that on your head all throughout the season when you get closer and closer. You know, what's that day going to be like for you? Oh, man, I, I'm just honestly like counting down the days. I'm just ready for him to be here, like ready to like hold him, you know, show him off and just, you know, give him all the love that I can. I love that, man. Well, like I said, Wishing you the best, nothing but blessings. It's an awesome moment for you. Um, I couldn't help but notice the raw emotion on your face when you walked out to get your number retired and you also got a key to the city and then Justin Steele Day was born. That's a lot of stuff going on in one day. So tell me how you felt and how emotional it was to kind of go back out there and really just, you know, embrace your coaches, embrace your, your town and, and have them embrace you back. That, that night was super special. Um, you know, Loosedale, Mississippi definitely holds a special place in my heart. It'll always be home for me. You know, I feel like I know everybody in the town. It's a very tight-knit community. And just, you know, everybody that came before me and played baseball, I think we've had like 14 or 15 guys that played at George County and then at some point ended up getting drafted. And, you know, to be the first that attended the high school and then made it to the big leagues, it was really special to get my number retired you know, on the high school field and then have a key to the city. It was a very special day and it's definitely something I won't forget at any time. That's awesome. And do you get a chance to, to work out with some of the, the current players? I know you probably have a good relationship with your coach. It seemed like from the video when I watched, tell us a little bit of, about those interactions when you get those chances. Yeah, it's always great to go back to the high school, see all the young guys coming up and, you know, just, you know, give them some life life lessons when it comes to the game or outside the game, just, you know, kind of lead them in that way and, you know, share, share with them what I've learned since I've been in the big leagues or even just professional baseball in general and, you know, just answer all their questions they have, you know, just make them, make them feel like I'm a normal person. They can come up to me and talk to me. And I just always enjoy going up to the high school and watching them practice and just, you know, you know, being a part of their team for the moment. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I'll, I'll leave with this. You know, you mentioned getting a chance to talk to them and, and give them some pointers and tell them, you know, your, your life lessons that you've learned. What, what's some advice you'd give to a young player that, you know, maybe came up and ran up to you on the street? You know, something that you, something that you learned and, and that you can pass along to them. Um, I would say, you know, you just have to be consistent. You just got to stay with it. You know, I've spent six seven eight parts of eight years in the minor leagues and you know it's a it's a long process from getting drafted out of high school to make it to the big leagues and you know at any point you can you know decide you want to retire and not chase it anymore but I'd say being resilient is very important you know I had my TJ surgery in 17 came back stronger from it you know ended up pushing towards the big leagues after that and I would just say I mean over the course of seven, eight years, I would say you just got to keep your head down and keep moving forward. And, you know, it's a, it's a long road, but it's so worth it. Yeah, man. I, I think that that kind of advice definitely plays in, in many other fields as well. And, you know, Patrick wisdom, I got the chance to talk to him recently and he kind of said the same thing, you know, it's, it's such a mental game and it's such a grind and just really nice to, to kind of hear that from someone who is established and has made it to, to their dream. And so I'm sure that's welcome advice to anyone listening. Um, So I got to chat with you a few years back at Cubs convention. We had a lot of fun in the Mm -hmm. digital side of it. You know, we talked some gaming, we broke out some Fortnite dances. Uh, Are you still still playing any video games in your spare time? If so, what have you been playing lately? 
Yeah, um, I got the PS5, and I've been playing NBA 2K, which is really fun on the uh, next-gen consoles. And then I've been playing some Apex, um, a little bit of Madden here and there. Um, just I keep, I keep it light, just mix it up, play a bunch of different games with my buddies. When you play Madden, are you only playing with the Saints? Yes, I have a franchise <laughs> mode with the Saints. And my team is absolutely loaded, sliders all the way up. So I just drop bombs the whole time and I just run up the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. As long as you're having fun, it doesn't matter what the result That's is, right? Why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right. I'll switch gears a little bit. You know, home is obviously very important to you, but now you spend a big part of your time here in Chicago. What's, what's it been like, you know, adjusting to moving and living here during the season coming from Loosedale and what have you enjoyed most about living in Chicago and playing for the Cubs? Um, I stayed not too far from Wrigley, so I got to walk to the park every day. And I, that was something I always enjoyed was, you know, like my 10, 15-minute walk to the park. You know, Wrigley Field's like right in the middle of like a neighborhood. And it, feel, it has that neighborhood feel to it. So I always enjoyed, especially like for a day game, walking to the field in the morning. Everybody, like Murphy's is like opening up, getting ready for <laughs> the game. They got something up on their billboard that has something to do with the game that day. And then just all the energy and the life around Wrigley is just super special. And just walking to the field every day is something I'll always remember. And then obviously trying different places to eat. Libby and I just, you know, seeing what the city has to offer. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, man, it's awesome. I, I obviously live nearby as well. And, you know, those, those are things that you can't really, you know, put a price on, right? You wake up and you go get your coffee, you're heading to the field and, you know, there's already tens of thousands of people moving around, having beers and I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, man. I just want the sun to come out so we can have some good weather here when you guys get back. <laughs> yeah. The energy around there on game days, especially day games is unreal. Absolutely. And speaking of games, I want to toss out a couple dates for you. So May 4th, 2021. Do you remember that one for any reason in particular? Was that May 4th? I don't think it – was that my debut? No, it was, it, was, it was a strikeout you had in the top of the ninth against the Dodgers. It was uh, okay. against Austin Barnes. Lib Libby's over there. She, Libby's over there. Dodgers, Dodgers. <laughs> Hi, Libby. Um, yeah, so Austin Barnes, you struck him out and you let out your, your emotion. And I think that that was the moment when, when Cubs fans really were like, whoa, this kid's arrived and, and he's for real. And that's how I felt personally. So what do you remember about that moment? And how, how good did it feel to get that out in that high leverage situation and we end up getting the win in the night? Yeah, it's, it was a big moment. It's de definitely something I'll remember for the rest of my career. It was just, uh, I mean, it was a three-game series. We were playing a doubleheader that day and we had already won two of the games and that was the last game. And uh, it was a tied ball game, ninth inning. And I think, like, this was the first situation, you know, that I've gotten into where, like, it, you know, high leverage, can swing either way, runner on second, you know. And it, I think that, you know, kind of what caused the emotion was just, you mm -hmm. know, it was a moment, my first time being in a big moment, you know, I, I was able to get through it on the other side, on the right side. And it was also my first win. So it, it was very special, you know, just, you know, to let it out. It, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. I remember texting in my group chat, like, I, I love this kid's fire so much. Like he's just firing me up and we go on to win the game. So that was a moment that I definitely will never forget from that season. All right. Mm -hmm. I got another, I got another date, September 18th, 2021. Does that one ring a bell? September 8th for, against the twins. First win as a starter. No, I said September 18th. September 18th. I'll give you a hint. You were playing against the Brewers. Is that my first start? No, it was your first hit. Oh. <laughs> so you're facing Corbin Burns. He hadn't allowed a hit in 36 batters. And you, boasting your 353 average and 1.012 OPS from George County High School, you go 104 exit velo for a single for your first major league hit. How cool is that, man? Like, I know that you talk, you know, it's been pretty well noted that you love to hit and you've got your opportunity there. And I know we have the universal DH now, but how special was that moment for you? And I'm assuming you got that ball somewhere special. Oh, balls in a glass case back at my house. And this <laughs> is one of my best achievements because Corbin Burns is that nasty. He's unbelievable. <laughs> love watching him pitch. 
But, yeah, that moment was really cool. I always loved hitting growing up, and especially in high school, loved doing it. Was I would say I was a lot better hitter than pitcher up until I got to the point in high school where I was throwing harder and whatnot. But something I always enjoyed, loved doing it, loved practicing it. And, um, yeah, to get to the big leagues, you know, as a pitcher and then get my chance to hit, and I was able to, you know, get in the hit column. It was special. And um, I always joke around with my buddies. like, yep, major league hitter right here. <laughs> I'd say so. You got a, you got way more uh, major league knocks than a lot of people walking on this earth. So that's really cool. I remember that moment really well. Um, you know, I feel like we needed something in that game. And here you come and you're just smacking balls out to, to the outfield. 104 exit velo is pretty good. So would you say that of all the, the pitchers on the staff, you might be the best hitter, best hitting pitcher? At this point, yes, because Jake Arietta definitely could drop bombs. <laughs> but he's not with us so at this point I, I'm pretty confident in saying yes well the good thing is you guys won't hit anymore so you can just retire as the best Cubs hitting pitcher from now on I guess I mean I think that's a pretty nice title you can have it um I won't fight you for it that's for sure <laughs> um okay so the Zambrano back in the day he could really swing it yeah, man. Uh, I used to love watching Big Z. He he would always, you know, I was always worried that he was going to hurt himself from swinging so hard, but yeah. <laughs> he, he, uh, he, he definitely brought the fire as well. Um, so the season's nearly upon us and you're down at camp, obviously getting ramped up. Tell us some of the things you've been working on behind the scenes and, and what are your, some of, some of your personal goals for this year? Uh, some things I really worked on this off season, as far as working out and stuff, I didn't really change much, but as far as throwing and stuff, I was just really honing in my mechanics, working on consistency, commanding all my pitches, and just making sure that, that uh, the change up my fifth pitch is still coming along because I really need that pitch versus righties. So I was really throwing the change up a lot every single day, working on the field for that pitch, and then just making sure I'm still commanding and controlling all my other pitches. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited for to to see you um, out there potentially taking your next step and and really just kind of getting your your establishment here as as a pillar for the Cubs. I mean, you know, the the track record you had in the minors and coming up and actually like showing what you could do a lot last year. And you know, I felt like you were getting much better as we went down the stretch and continuing to grow. And you know, I, I it, it's it's been talked about. You know, Rossi seems like he's got a lot of confidence in you and. You know, we're really excited as fans to see you take that next step. So I'm wishing you the best. I know that you're very busy and your time is really valuable, but really appreciate you taking the time to, to hang out with me and, and do this for us. Because as we get to know you better, we, you know, as fans love to, to root even more than for a person that we know has such great energy and great vibes. And, you know, you and I have met before, but this has been really fun. So appreciate your time, man. And then let's uh, talk. Let's chop it up again soon. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, always. I'm holding you to the golf thing, that's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, and take care. Thank you. Take it easy.